Nigel Smith in the Privateers Championship. He's right behind Jan Lammers in the Volvo. Up towards Abby. And bang! Look at that! Look at that! that no, well, now number 26 is Hamish Irvine, and behind him is Nigel Albon. And they're stuck right in the middle of the track at Club Corner. Albon out of the car. Is Hamish Irvine all right? Looks like it. They're both very sensibly getting off the track as fast as they can, but surely they will have to stop the race. They can't keep it going with two cars and glass all over the tarmac. Well, the crowd give a little congratulatory cheer. Off go the drivers. The marshals are very sensibly getting rid of them. And look at the wreckage. Two cars stuck there. We're with Soper. He's approaching the wreckage now. Steve Soper moves right, avoids it. They can't go on now. And sure enough, the red flags are out there, stopping the race. And Gabrielle Tarquini is the champion. And Thompson stayed in front throughout the first lap, but the good work was about to come to nothing, as the race was about to be stopped following this enormous accident suffered by Charlie Cox in the Mondeo. Without doubt, it was one of the biggest accidents the championship had ever seen. And as the rescue crews went into action, there was no question of the race continuing, even though Cox's car had barrel rolled through the runoff area and across a service road. He'd been traveling at around 135 miles an hour at the time of the accident, and there was great concern around the circuit. So Thompson slows the field down, and the news came that Cox was out of the car, very shaken with head injuries, but seemingly not seriously injured, and that's miraculous after an accident of this scale. But the car was wrecked, and that plus medical precautions would keep Charlie Cox out of the championship for four months. And this just a fortnight after gaining the best ever championship result by a privateer. And as the last wreckage was cleared, we turned to Richard Kay, who had perhaps the best view of what went wrong for Cox. Yeah, I was taking my time at the back, and uh, Charlie wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary, just braking alongside Nigel. And as soon as he hit the brakes, it's as if one rear wheel locked before the rest, and it just kept on locking and went off into the grass and rolled various times. So, I mean, it's a big accident, definitely. And it's action. Down to Old Hall, first of all. And Burt is attacking through the middle. And he's hit Thompson, who hits Rydell. Thompson spins. He's gone off onto the grass. What a start. But Rydell and Radisic are still going. They're leading out of Old Hall. Here they are coming towards us. Down to Cascades. The Volvo and the Ford together. Now we're with Rydell. And he's slowing. He must have... Something's happened. Past him goes Sugden. Past him goes Alan Menu there. So, Rydell is down to fourth position. There they go, Ford, and all the rest of them streaming through. But look back at Thompson's Vauxhall, smoke pouring from the car. He's got the door open. He's obviously touring in to retire. Round the left-hander at Island Bend, going up to what? And there's somebody off, two cars off, two cars off there. Well, one of them, that's David Leslie's Honda Accord. He, he's off, tires all over the road. I imagine they're going to have to stop the race. Well, oh, and there's another car down there. That's an Alfa Romeo, I can tell you that. And the marshals are worried. There's one of them looking in the window. Don't like the look of this at all. Red flag, they're stopping the race. Ambulance sirens, oh, that is Derek Warwick's Alfa Romeo. And he's still in the car. Now, here's a replay from Leslie's car. Up to Ireland at 130 miles an hour. He starts to turn in. That's Derek Warwick's Alfa Romeo. Contact, what? Warwick goes off. And so does David Leslie, up over the tyres and down. But Leslie's OK, obviously, we're with him. And this is how it looked from David Brabham's BMW. In front of us is Tarquini. They go round the left-hander, look ahead of them, though, and you can see there is Leslie going over the tyre wall. Warwick has already gone off, and there's his car being pushed away. What a mess it's in. And that is David Leslie's battered Honda. Derek and I went into Island Bend together, uh, him on the inside, me on the outside, and I tried to keep on going right round the outside, not to um, give way altogether. He came out, as you do, and the car came out and out and squeezed me out to the outside. And that caught his left rear uh, wing of the car, because there was nowhere else for me to go, but it disappeared off onto the grass, trying to stay on the circuit. And that turned him round one way, and then me the other. He's gone off into the tyre barrier, and I went backwards through the tyre barrier. 
so uh, they're extracting him at the moment. He's all right. They're just taking every precaution, that's all. And I just um, jumped out and ran away, basically. But the cars are obviously not all right. <laughs> My to... car's fair worn out. <laughs> How's that for a good description? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Derek's is also badly damaged. It will not be racing today. Those two cars are now finished. Fair wore out it is, and thank heavens Derek's OK while they fix James Thompson's Vauxhall for the restart. And he's going to be OK. They're going to get it ready in time.